Is Google search dying? When was the last time you looked something up on Google and you added the words Reddit to your search? Now, I remember I've done this, you know, looking for a backpack recently. And I found myself, whenever I write the words, you know, uh, everyday carry backpack, I'd add the words Reddit to my search. If you're like me and you're adding the words Reddit or you're looking on YouTube, you're not alone because millions of other people are likely doing this exact same thing. And this massive movement of people from Google search to other platforms like Reddit and YouTube was highlighted in a blog post that went viral on DKB. And this has sparked a pretty vigorous discussion that Google search may actually be dying. Let's dive in. Look up anything on Google now and you face pages and pages of comparison websites, affiliate websites, e-commerce shops, paid blogs, and people with a real incentive to sell you something. Reviews are paid ads. Blog posts are really advertorials. Comparison websites, they, they sell featured placements for the products. And the websites at the top of the Google search results are usually the ones who are the best at search engine optimization. Maybe they've invested the most in it. So who can we trust? Which results are authentic and which ones are just trying to sell me something? Perhaps the biggest problem Google has is a problem to do with misaligned incentives. Search for anything on Google and the entire top half of the results is now taken up by adverts. And it's kind of incredible how we've just gotten to accept this. Kind of like boiling the frog, it happens over time and we don't notice, right? I remember back, way back when, um, we used to get really annoyed by websites with too many ads. You go on a website, oh, you know, ads everywhere and we'd click away. And that was one of the reasons why I think people like Google, right? It was so clean, so much white space and all this kind of stuff. And it's just kind of funny to me now how Google is absolutely covered in ads and we all just kind of accept it. But the problem with the adverts is that it creates misaligned incentives. Now it's not about providing the best result for the user. It's about showing that product that somebody is paying you to show. Good experience or money. And this was a problem highlighted by Sergey Brin, quote, currently the predominant business model for commercial search engines is advertising. The goals of the advertising business do not always correspond to providing quality search to users. We expect that advertising funded search engines will be inherently biased towards the advertisers and away from the needs of the consumers. Furthermore, advertising income often provides an incentive to provide poor quality search results. And this was his criticism of, you know, previous commercial search engines. And this was way back in 1998. And it's unfortunate, like the blog says, that this criticism actually became the instruction manual kind of of what Google ends up doing. They end up creating this advertising system, which is arguably taking down the quality of the search results as well. You see this picture here. For some searches, literally the whole screen on Google is now ads. <laughs> Retool, Slack integration, ad, 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 competitor ads, you know, everything. And then along with the issue of misaligned incentives with advertising, you have the whole SEO thing. Now, ranking websites high up in Google is of business critical importance. Everybody understands that. You get a huge influx of targeted traffic and that can make or break your business. That is a fact that's well known. However, can we say that this system of SEO results in a better searching experience for people? Well, not always. And this is something Google has wrestled with for years with its algorithm. For example, what is better, new content or old content? You might say, new content. And that's what Google thinks too. They all prefer to show you an article written last month rather than last year. However, the side effect of this is that it's caused digital marketers to quite literally duplicate articles just for the sake of recency. And 
at a wider level, this need to tailor content to please the search engine algorithm results in a quite deeply uninteresting ecosystem of content that is the same. The same articles written on the same topics in thousands of different ways, you know, how to train your dog, all this kind of stuff, answering the same search terms with the same points filled with the same keywords and the same metadata and all of this kind of stuff in the same headers. And why? Because digital marketers have to do it because if they don't follow the rules, they end up getting buried on page 50. In this comic, the lady says, Google, I have a problem. To which Google replies, here's 1,000 websites with the exact same solution. In the end, YouTube says, we got this. And some people have started complaining as well that the actual search queries themselves has gotten worse. And this is all to do with Google presuming they know what is best. After all, they have the data. They know the trends, they know the most popular searches. So based on this big data, they actually auto-correct you all the time to help you on your way to find what, you, what they think you're looking for. Right? However, this does go too far sometimes. Quote, forced synonyms and people also searched for are typically useless and almost infuriating. Once you get off the first or second page, the results get even worse with pages entirely unrelated to the query. And this is very true, right? You know, do you ever go on the second, third page? And, you know, you'll notice that when you go on the second, third page of the search results, you, you start getting really random things. And it seems like the whole system has been kind of watered down to serve the masses based on this big data and based on Google thinking they know what you should be searching for. So if Google is dying, how has Google actually managed to survive all of this? They're still there, aren't they? Well, here's an interesting point. Quote, let's be blunt here. Almost no consumer consciously chooses to use Google search anymore. This bluntness does not go far enough. People do not change defaults, no matter how easy it may be to do so. Defaults. In 2020, the New York Times reported that Google pays Apple between eight and $12 billion per year to be the default search engine on Apple devices. And according to analysts, this could now be between 18 and $22 billion in 2022. Quote, we have noted in prior research that Google is likely to keep paying to ensure Microsoft doesn't outbid it. That is how high the stakes are. And it's almost amazing at how important this is. Here's another comment. Quote, Defaults are effectively permanent settings. It does not matter how easy it is to change a default setting if practically no one ever does it. $15 billion dollars is too much to pay for something that may or may not change. It does not change. It is money in the bank. And it's true, right? It makes a lot of sense. You know, the $15 billion kind of proves that people don't change their default search engine settings. And this is vitally important. And you know, if you try to change your default search settings yourself, you can kind of see why. Because in a cruel irony, you may actually have to Google how to do it. So is Google search dying? At its core, I think Google search has, you know, an incentives problem, the misaligned incentives problem with the whole, you know, advertising situation. How can they serve the best results when they have to really pander to uh, advertisers all the time? And, you know, this has led to them uh, changing the search results. Half the page is now, you know, adverts. And this is exactly what Sergey Brin warned about you know, that it's creating this kind of suboptimal searching experience. And this misaligned incentives problem has been compounded by other issues like, you know, the whole SEO situation, which is again, very monetary, right? Bot written content, rewritten content, lots of spam, all these kinds of things. And while, you know, you could say, well, you know, Google has been doing good. We're all still, we're all still using Google. I use Google to search for Reddit things, right? Um, it's hard to argue that the search experience seems to have gotten worse. And it's also hard to argue that a lot of people are going to other platforms to search for things like Reddit, like YouTube, etc. And to survive, Google has been throwing billions of dollars at Apple and other companies to force users to use Google search. But 
And for how long can any of this last? The next time you look for something online, maybe a product review or whatever, notice if you append the word Reddit to your search. 